Supplements. Welcome to the video explaining the Out of Context Symbiote Supplement, one of the Out of Context Supplements by the inventor of the Out of Context System named Devrosphere. My name is Luciano. I make videos where I talk about jump chains and all of their kookiness, and I'm super excited to be talking about the topic of today's video. Thing worth noting about jump docs is that by default, unless the jump doc specifically says so, you are not replacing existing characters when you enter a setting. Rather, you are becoming a wholly original individual that now exists within the setting that you are entering. I think that that's especially neat, and I really like that because I've definitely seen Choose Your Own Adventures where you become the protagonist, and while I think that's cool, I don't always want to enter a setting that way. In fact, I tend to prefer subtle ways to enter settings, and subtle ways to exist within settings. It's worth noting that this particular jumps... Uh, unique origin, the <laughs> meteor that falls from the sky and lands somewhere is not especially subtle. The ways that this jump allows you to interact with your settings can be. This is the out-of-context supplement for symbiotes. Symbiotes are most often conceptualized as venom-like creatures to a lot of different people, but the term symbiote can have a lot of different meanings, and symbiotes can look like a lot of different things, which I think this out-of-context supplement symbolizes and captures extremely well with its multiple origins. As always, you get the star you get the standard 1000 choice points budgets and you can take this as an isolated jump so the only powers, perks and items you would be getting as well as drawbacks and things you would have to face would be coming from this particular jump documents, but you can also go to another setting. For example, you could go to the world of Avatar The Last Airbender, a world where there are no superpowered symbiotes or parasites, unless you want to count spirits, um, but I don't recall there ever being instances of spirits possessing or overshadowing individuals and doing the sort of things that this jump doc is all about in that continuity. So you would be able to go there, you would be able to use an Avatar The Last Airbender uh, jump documents, and you would be able to use this one, and you would get stuff from the Avatar The Last Airbender jump documents, and this. There are multiple origins in this. There is organic, which allows you to be a worm-like or insectoid-like creature that buries into its host and alters them from within. There is gelatinous, which allows you to be an almost liquid-like organism who's able to soak into the body of your targets through any holes on their surface. There is crystalline, which would make you a, co a complex combination of minerals and elements that have become a sentient entity. There is technological, which would allow you to be a technological extension of someone else. There is mystical, which would allow you to be a tool that your host could use in some capacity, in addition to deriving energy from them and also giving them some sort of power in return. There is spiritual, which would make you perhaps a demon or a ghost or an angel in some continuities uh, that is able to take over other living beings. And then there is the energy option. This is There are a number of different origins here. I'm sure you could find something that suits you well. And now we're going to go ahead and look at the actual perks in this jump doc. As usual, we begin with the to get a boosted version of a perk note before diving on in to the actual generic perks. These are perks that cost the same regardless of the origins that you choose and are thus undiscounted. Possession is a free perk that gives you your origin appropriate symbiote alt form. Uh, going from there, we get the Symbiotic Origin perk, which is a perk that you can take, that you can keep with you, and will allow you to enter jumps in a new way, very specifically. You will enter jumps whenever you use this perk as a symbiote within the meteor that carried you from the homeworld of your species to the setting. If you have a number of out-of-context origin perks, then you can grab the Dynamic Entry perk. 
uh, going beyond there, we now have the perks that actually cost points. Also, I'll backtrack for two seconds and say that if you want additional symbiotic, symbiotic alt forms, you will be able to grab them for 50 choice points every single time you grab one beyond the first one, which is given to you for free. Costume is a perk that allows you to use origin appropriate methods. You will be able to generate new clothing for your host that are extensions of you. You can change the shape, you can change the size, shape, and color of these clothes at will. The next perk is Cure, which allows you to remove any harmful substances within your host's body, including drugs, viruses, and even other symbiotes or parasites. Going beyond that, we have Adaption, which allows you to get any special abilities that your host gets. So if you were to go to the world of Harry Potter, which is an example that I like a whole lot, it's just super handy, super iconic and recognizable, and you were to get a host who is a witch or wizard, you would be able to study and eventually copy that power for yourself and you could also share it with other future hosts. So if you were to go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and you did not have Harry Potter magic, you could, with this perk, make a copy of, Harry, of witch or wizard Harry Potter style magic and give that to other people, including mug muggles and no mages and anyone else who doesn't have magic, so long as you are possessing them and you want to give it to them. This perk gets boosted if you have cure and gives you the superior parasite perk, which allows you to, whenever you cure your host of a parasite, symbiote, or illness, you'll be able to absorb the abilities that parasites, symbiotes, or illnesses have, allowing you to use those powers and potentially give them to your hosts as well. The capstone perk for this section, as well as a perk that can get boosted itself, is Virus, which makes you go from being a singular entity to being countless nanoscopic organisms who are all part of a singular hive mind. You will be able to asexually reproduce, creating more of yourself. This will allow you to go from having a single host at a time to being able to take over a whole hive of hosts and all of the different facets of yourself see you, your true consciousness, as their master, and they are loyal to you and will obey you. They will also have the same personality and morality as you, and serve as little copies of you. Obviously, that's an incredibly powerful perk. It also gets even more boosted if you have the other perks in this particular set of perks. Uh, if you have Adaption, you are able to go from having Virus to having Hoarder, which in addition to giving you what Virus gives you, also allows you to copy and share the special abilities of all of your hosts simultaneously, allowing everyone you inhabit to gain the abilities of every single person you've inhabited. And you can also get Vaccine if you have Cure and you have Virus. This will allow you to make any parasite symbiotes and microscopic life forms into acceptable hosts for you to control or destroy. Now we're able to go to the first of the origins, the organic origin. The organic set of perks, you begin with compatible, which is free for organic symbiotes. It allows you to camouflage yourself in order to appear to be a natural part of your target's body, making it so that any, or any organism you possess will be unable to actively reject you. I think that this is an especially fascinating perk because I'm not sure what the limit is. I don't know if you could make yourself appear as limbs for someone who has been amputated rather than something like an organ and being able to enter your target's body and serve as that organ for them. There's a lot of potential uses there depending on how extensive and creative you decide to be with that perk. That said, it is free for organic symbiotes so it's probably not intended to be wildly powerful by itself. Alterations allows you to slowly alter the shape of yourself and your host in order to meet your needs. Uh, examples include reducing your rate
rate of aging or your host rate of aging, increasing muscle mass or adding bladed, bladed bones as a form of weaponry. Replication, uh, which is one, which is the first perk in this tree that can be boosted, allows you to create additional functional components from within your host, allowing them to have backup organs, additional limbs, or replace any body part that they lose. This is a more clear version of the idea that I articulated when I was reading Compatible, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. This gets a boost if you have the adaption perk of becoming transplants, which allows allows you to grow any functional body part from any host you've ever had onto your current host, allowing them to have features that they should not be biologically capable of having. And this is an especially interesting idea in a lot of different ways. One way that I think that this could be cheesed into something truly terrifying is if you have the virus perk, so you are able to possess multiple people at the same time, and you have replication and adaption, you would be able to possess a whole bunch of people who've been amputated, and you would be able to regrow the limbs that they lost. You would be able to uh, possess someone and use them as a farm of organs, which could be a way to get a lot of money or influence once you reveal your true nature and explain to someone, for example, a black market organ trafficker person, the way that you work. You would be able to strike up a deal with them where you use just one or two people as effectively infinite money farms. Just something to keep in mind. Devour, which is the capstone perk for this particular origin, allows you to completely consume a host, killing it and erasing its mind. By doing this, you will gain the host body as a pseudo alt form that your symbiotic alt form can summon at will under your control. The basic idea here is that once you do this, you will always have a host that you can use for yourself in any sort of symbiotic context. It's also worth noting that this can be a very handy way of dealing with creatures who have powers that you like, that you would like to gain for yourself. You would be able to possess them, and then you would be able to kill them and permanently gain them and their powers as things that you can use however you want. This is also a boostable perk. If you have the virus perk, this becomes Chimera, which allows you to combine any consumed host into a new host, either having features of multiple hosts combined into one body, or by having the combined biomass of multiple hosts. So you could use this to make a gigantic, terrifying mass body that can do all sorts of wacky mischief, or you can create a wholly original form for yourself that has the features of multiple hosts that you have stored within your sort of database of people that you have killed and possessed. If you have alterations, this also allows you to get Incubator, which allows you to impregnate your host with the parasites that you can customize using your host's body and when the parasite exits the host, you can consume its masses if using Devour and then gain the original creature as something that you can possess, which allows you to create even more parasites in a different way. The next origin is the Gelatinous origin. It begins with the Tentacles perk. Uh, some of these are... Oh, monetizing this video is definitely going to be fun once I ever hit that point. Um, <laughs> this is the free perk for Gelatinous. It allows you to spread and reshape your body, allowing you to produce adhesive tendrils, tentacles, and web-like extensions. You can extend these limbs out further, making them longer, but in exchange for making them thinner. Enhanced Physiology allows you to envelop parts of your host in yourself, safely inflating the body part and strengthening them. This will increase the physical strength and durability of the part, depending on how powerful both your host and you yourself are. Venom, which is the first boostable perk in this particular set of perks, allows you to produce any type of venom, poisons, or toxins that you've interacted with. Through this, you can excrete the liquid from any part of yours or your host's body without harming the host. For example, you could use this as a way to give your host some sort of pseudo-breath weapon. You could allow them to spit out poison or venom uh, pretty easily, that kind of thing. If you have the adaption perk, you get the anti-venom version of this. This allows you to create a custom poison, nutrient blend, or antidote that will target any type of organism, material, or entity. Specifically, even those who would normally be immune to these kinds of effects, you can even use this to create injections that can 
bestow any powers that you have copied, which is one of the first times that we're seeing stuff about ways to share powers, which is a pretty big part of this particular jump. Self-sufficient is the capstone perk for this origin. It allows it, it allows you to, even when you don't have a host, you can create a shell around yourself out of your materials that will take the appearance of a host of your design. This allows you to give yourself a sort of pseudo host that you can use. If you have the virus perk, this becomes Hive. While you're in any alt form, you may choose to simultaneously have your symbiote alt form active, with you being both the host and the symbiote. This will grant you all the abilities of both and give you the option of becoming a hybrid of both species without changing your outward appearance. So effectively, this gives you a unique way of creating an alt form for yourself that will allow you to use your symbiotic powers and also any other powers you have. So if you have been a symbiote and you have gained the powers of several Marvel superheroes in alt forms uh, through your symbiotic actions, and you have also been to, again, the wizarding world of Harry Potter, you can have an alt form that allows you to be a wizard or a witch while also using the powers that you've gained from Marvel at the same time even though those should normally be linked to different alt forms unless you have other rules that you're following in your chain. If you have the Enhanced Physiology perk, this becomes Monstrous Form. This allows you to grow your mass, allowing you or your host to grow to a gigantic size. Doing this allows you to retain the same general shape as when you're enhancing your host, but to a far larger and far stronger degree, allowing your host and you yourself to become stronger and do things that require more physicality at the same time time. The crystalline perk and origin tree is next. We start off with the sturdy perk, which is free for the specific origin. It makes you as default it makes you as sturdy as a processed diamond as your threshold durability and also gives you a mechanism through which you can become more durable. Mental Augmentations is the next perk in this origin, and it allows you to be a conduit for your host brain, which increases their thinking and pr mental processing speed, and also their efficiency, making it far better for your hosts when you are inside of them to do things like think critically and think about multiple different solutions to problems, things like that. This allows you to be incredibly beneficial to a wide range of different hosts. The next perk's name serves as a little bit of a clue as for what this particular origin is inspired by. It's inspired by Worm, and while I'm not going to get into any spoilery details, um, just know that this is a very fascinating origin for this reason. The next perk is Trigger. It allows you to simulate your host structure by putting them through physical and mental pain, which will give them random powers. You have a certain amount of control over these powers, such as what they can target and how much can be released safely. This is also a boostable perk. If you have Adaption, this becomes Controlled Release, which gives you far more control over what kind of power your host will unlock, and you're able to force them to gain additional powers that supplement the second set. This is a very fascinating ability. I definitely think that lots of characters who come through this particular jump would definitely be wise to grab this. It can be very neat in a lot of different circumstances. The capstone perk for this particular origin is subordinates. This allows you to produce non-sentient, subservient, crystalline minions that will follow your every order. They can be used as hosts, but will break down over the course of 24 hours or with too much use. This is a little bit of an odd perk in and of itself, but effectively it kind of makes you a master from Worm. It gives you the ability to control and influence a certain type of minion, a certain type of creature. There is a lot you could theoretically do with this that would be very interesting, especially because it seems like these crystalline minions are probably not as small or as weird physically as you would be if you are able to use them as hosts. You can kind of think of them as something akin to golems from D&D, &D, Pathfinder, and various other fantasy things that you're able to exert control over. 
this is a boostable perk because it's the capstone perk in a jump like this. If you have the virus boot, if you have the virus perk, it becomes army, which allows you to take direct control over all of your constructed minions as if they were a host and create more of them from each host. So not only can you take control of them, you can split them off to make even more of them that you can control. If you have the mental augmentations perk from this particular origin, then this perk also gains the distributed thought ability which allows you to supercharge your intelligence by making multiple minions and your host's minds work simultaneously with yours as the main intelligence. And this will allow you to have parallel processing thinking abilities, allowing you to have more than one train of thought at the same time. I don't know how many jumps I've covered in my YouTube channel that have this kind of ability, but these are pretty common when it comes to intelligence boosters and intelligence perks and jumps in general. The ability to have multiple fully focused trains of thought is a very handy ability in a lot of different contexts. Moving on, the next origin is the technological origin. It starts off with the digital perk uh, that is free for this origin. It allows you to have a digital mind, even though your components are physical, which will give your mind aspects of a digital system, including a subconscious calculator, an internal filing system, and the ability to more easily, freely, and efficiently process any knowledge or information you have. The next perk is Wi-Fi, which allows you to wirelessly connect to the internet and compatible electronic devices. This will allow you to explore a system's information and manipulate it as though it were a host. This whole origin is basically about having ways to use symbiotic abilities on the internet and other such things. Optimize is the first perk in this one that is boostable. Optimize by itself allows you to, whenever you connect to a host, instantly gain blueprints and you will become able to instantly optimize its internal systems. You can also compare the blueprints of the host to those you already have from previous hosts, allowing you to see what components could be replaced to improve it. This is very interesting, and it sounds like it could only work on robotic beings and other sorts of artificial entities, but I could definitely see ways to be creative with this and allow you to gain an understanding of the internal structures and compositions of organic life forms as well. If you have adaption, this becomes upgrade, which allows you to temporarily transform whatever host you are possessing by altering the device's shape and functions to match your intention. You can redesign the internal and external components, allowing you to completely change or improve the functionality of the host to suit your objectives by adding additional components that emphasize features of the host. Again, it sounds like it's intended to be for digital, artificial, mechanical, and robotic life forms. I could definitely see ways to be creative with this and to make it more than that. Remote server is the capstone perk for this origin. It allows you to be inside of more than one host, uh, partitioning your main self between your host and an offsite server. Both partitions can communicate with each other so long as they both have internet connections and will be able to synchronize, returning to a singular hive mind whenever they connect. You will continue existing so long as your host and server are not both destroyed at the same time. Should your host be destroyed, you'll be able to create a new partition to attach to a new host, and should your server be destroyed, your host component will be able to format a new server partition with than an internet connected computer. This one is more clearly technological than some than the last one was. If you have the virus perk, this becomes Trojan, uh, which will allow you to do which will allow you to be better than requiring a single a singular server. Um, it makes it so that each of your nanoscopic hive mind extensions are each partitions of yourself, allowing you to have as many servers and host components as you would like. You are also able to send your nanoscopic partitions as data across the internet to other computers and devices devices, allowing you to infect them without being able to be detected by any type of scanning equipment. If you have the Wi-Fi perk from this origin, you get Omniversal Connection, which allows you to permanently connect to your portions regardless of where they are, keeping all of your partitions synchronized as a singular mind, though you may have discomfort if, they, if you are in different time zones and things like that. You're able to connect to any device within the same continuity as you, regardless of whether it has external connections or not, which 
wildly expands the way that this particular symbiotic origin is intended to work. It allows you to be a lot more freeform and to do a lot more creative things with technology. That said, there are plenty of jumps where this origin would require some creative finessing, so this origin may be incredibly handy depending on the type of jumper that you would like, or it may not be quite as handy as some of the other origins in this jump bar. The next origin is the mystical origin. The mystical origin begins with the tool perk. This allows you to have a default symbiotic alt form that is able to take the form of a single equipable tool such as a sword, helmet, ring, or cape. This allows you to shift into any equipable object you've ever come into contact with. So if you've come across things like crowns or tiaras or dresses, you are able to shift your alt form to become those things. There are ways that you could do something vaguely similar to this with other perks from other origins, but this is the origin for if you want to be something like a sword spirit or an umbrella spirit, and it very much reflects that motif moving forward. Mana Pool is the next perk. It makes you a magical symbiote that contains an amount of magical power known as mana. Using this energy, you are able to both cast spells yourself or have your host wield magic uh, so that that way they can cast spells of their own. When some of your mana has been used, it will take some time for you to regain the amount that was used, and if enough of it has been used, then it may require some time before you are fully recharged. Bloodline is the next perk, it is the first boostable perk in this origin. This allows you to imbue your host with a magical bloodline, which allows them to cast magic even when you are not beside them and are affecting them. By default, you're able to imbue your host with an arcane bloodline that grants them raw magic and a number of innate spells that they will understand how to cast on instant. Instinct. If you have adaption, this becomes leech, and the, if it becomes leech, you're able to consume the DNA or equivalent material from the blood or other available material of magical or supernatural creatures, which allows you to gain additional magical bloodlines that you can imbue into your host. You can even hybridize these bloodlines in order to create a chimeric bloodline with as many benefits of each bloodline as possible. The warlock perk is the capstone perk for this origin. This, this expands how you can use your magic. You are able to make a pact with as many people as you wish and as you can. Anyone that has a pact with you becomes a potential host that you can teleport to at any time, making them your active host. While someone is in a pact with you, you are able to share both your magical energy and knowledge of magic with them at the same time. This is an incredibly fascinating perk and is one of my all-time favorites in this particular origin. It is such a fascinating ability, and I wish that I could see more packed stuff like it. I have a Chilling Adventures of Sabrina jump that is in the works that's actually a decent amount completed that has a version of something similar to this, but effectively it makes you a D&D style Style packed patron, and you can use it to give people pack style magic, uh, which I think is very much the intent here. If you have the virus perk, then this can become cleric, which allows you to draw worship and faith from your host, which will grant you a divine status. You will instantly be able to make anyone who worships you into a host, and you can exist as a divine being. As a divine being, you can create your own divine realm that's connected to your divinity, which will incorporate any domains you possess. As a divine being, you can remain alive even after death by living within your divine realm, and you'll be able to exit your divine realm and be fully resurrected if enough people follow you and worship you. If you have the mana pool perk, then this becomes the wizard perk. Uh, it gives you the ability to imbue your host with their own mana pool that you can tap into in order to gain a wider breadth of magical power and learn any magical skills or knowledge that they gain. So this this whole origin is in some respects the D&D slash RPG uh, style origin. Very interesting. A lot of fun can be had here. The next uh, origin is the spiritual origin. It begins with ethereal. This allows you to shift your symbiotic alt form into an intangible state, which will allow you to pass through solid substances as though they were not there. While any part of you is intangible, all of you is intangible, and you'll be able to float at a similar speed to your walking speed. The next perk is ghost sights, which allows 
allows you to see spirits, souls, or ghosts. And you can also use this to determine the purity of people around you. This even allows you to see the outlines of beings, even when they're invisible and through solid objects. I actually, the first couple of times I read through this, forgot about the part that allows you to determine the purity of their hearts or intentions, which can be very handy if your jumper is naive or they are a scheming manipulator slash charisma type jumper. So just something to keep in mind when you are coming through this particular uh, jump. Soul Burner is the next perk here, and it is the first boostable perk. This allows you to produce a form of hellfire that will break down any material form from spiritual energy or souls. This can allow you to wound or even kill any entity you use this flame on, including ghosts, soul, um, soul lacking demons, and even some immortals. And if you have the adaption perk, this becomes spiritual elements. This allows you to produce spiritually infused variants of the of the classical elements that utilize the energies of spiritual realms to alter the effects of the elements. You can produce fire, water, wind, and earth with raw spiritually infused energy in order for the element to mimic life, the soul destroying hell energy, the soul replenishing heavenly energy, or the cleansing effects of purgatory that strip all foreign substances from a soul. You can even absorb any type of energy infused into an element you can produce in order to incorporate it into elements you can produce in the future. Soul food is the capstone perk for this origin. Uh, with this perk, you're able to consume the spiritual energy of a host or other targeted souls, such as ghosts and living beings that contain souls, which will allow you to enrich and enlarge your own soul and spiritual energy and become more powerful overall. This can also be used to enrich the soul of the person you're possessing and powering their own spiritual energy. If you have the virus perk, this becomes Legion. With this, whenever you need to use the spiritual energy of one of your hosts, you're able to use the spiritual energy of all of your hosts at the same time, as though they were a singular monstrous soul. And if you have the Ghost Sight perk, which is available in this origin, this becomes Soul Sight. Your spiritual sight allows you to see both the inner workings of each person's soul and spiritual energies. It not only allows you to absorb souls and spirits, but even mimic any useful or unique attributes within a target's soul or spirit. Using this, you're able to consume specific attributes of a target, including the evil, hatred, or invasive spiritual energy of souls within a target. You can use this to consume a soul anchor without harming the object, or to cleanse a person of dark impulses without harming them. You can also use this to alter the the soul or spirit of your host. This is an incredibly handy way to deal with evil beings without doing something as direct as murdering them or condemning them or imprisoning them. It's effectively an ability that allows you to redeem targets if you wish or corrupt them if you wish. You could definitely use it for evil and is a very interesting perk. The final origin for this jump is the energy origin. The first perk in the energy origin is power. This is free for the energy origin tree, uh, energy origin, and allows you to act as a power source, which will make you sleepy, but can power and empower whatever device or power you wish to charge. This is very fascinating because reading this just as it's written, it seems like you can use this to act as not only a power source for something, but an amplifier for something. So if you have enough energy, you could be used as the power core or for something like a laser rifle from Warhammer 40k, or you could be used as the power source for some sort of superpower, for some sort of Star Wars mega weapon or something like that. And it would be even stronger than normal because of the fact that you are powering it. Now, obviously, gaining enough power to do something like that without destroying yourself or putting yourself into a coma is a little bit of a challenge, but still, there's a lot of potential with this particular perk. The next perk is Projection, which allows you to project an offensive beam and project three-dimensional structures made out of your energy. The structures can be used as offensively as your beams, but they are lacking substance and can be passed through, which is a little bit interesting because I guess the trade-off is that you can have bigger attacks that take up more energy, uh, that take up more space and are thus harder to dodge but could be tanked a little bit more easily than if you were to just use your energy as a regular offensive beam. Generic Memory is the first boostable perk from this origin. This allows you to bestow your host with any skills, knowledge, or abilities that you have, 
five, including combat experience, academic knowledge, and martial proficiency. Adaption boost. Uh, if you have the adaption perk, this becomes collective memory, which allows you to copy and bestow the skills, knowledge, and experience of every host you've ever had, allowing you to collectively bestow the refined capabilities of all of your hosts. This also increases the breadth and scope of your capabilities personally. This is a very interesting set of perks because it kind of sounds like you could use this to protect your hosts a lot more easily or give them the ability to protect themselves and is an idea that I don't see written out in this form super often, at least not this bluntly and explicitly, and I kind of like that. The if the capstone perk for this particular origin is embodiment, is an energy entity, you're able to be the manifestation of a concept or purpose within the universe, such as being the physical manifestation of will, rebirth, sea life, chaos, or any theological property, with your powers growing in proportion to how much you fulfill that purpose or embody that attribute. That is an incredibly interesting perk on its face. I think that there's a lot that you could do there. I also think that it is something that not every jumper really needs, or even every jumper would be able to do super effectively. Um, but it's definitely something to keep an eye out. As usual, since this, is the, since this is the capstone perk for this particular origin, this is boosted if you have Virus, the general capstone perk from earlier in the jump dock, uh, or if you have Projection, which is the perk from this particular origin. If you have Virus, this becomes Ascension, which allows you to control the divine domain of the concept or purpose that you embody, allowing you to temporarily exist in any location that your domain does. As such, you're able to make anyone who embodies your domain into a host while they embody your principle or concept. This also allows you to manage and manipulate that concept or principle on a universal scale with any powers you have that relates to that domain becoming wildly enhanced. So there is a lot there. Effectively, what this does is it makes you omnipresent in any place uh, where your domain is being used slash is a part of the background. So if you decided to have the domain of life, if you were the physical manifestation of life, then you would be able to exist anywhere where life does, that kind of thing. Um, and it also allows you to make people who embodies your domain into a host, so long as they're embodying your principle or concept. So there is also a lot you could do there. If someone is, for example, a parent, um, you could do a lot with them if you have the domain of life. But also, depending on how you decide to go about that, if you have the domain of life, you could possess anyone who's alive, which is hilariously strong. Um, if you have projection, this becomes solidify, which allows you to make your energy uh, your energy projections take on any state of matter that you wish, allowing your energy to be as sturdy as any materials you can imagine, with it being reinforced by the energies of the concept or purpose you fulfill. So you could be a being of life, and you could create a house that is as sturdy as life is. Stuff like that. Moving forward, we have the items. There is only one item, and it is available for free. It is a meteor. It's a space rock that acts as a perfect environment for you, able to store you while you do not have a host. So you could be there uh, and still be in your symbio alt form without a host, without being in danger. It's able to travel through space and even impact a planet from orbit without taking damage or disturbing the internal environment of the meteorite itself. So this doesn't mean that the area that it hits would be spared from the effect of the meteor, although you should probably assume that this is a very small meteor rather than something that would devastate a planet or significantly alter a world. A meteor may be the size of like a tree or something rather than a meteor the size of a state or a city. There is a companion section, but this section is only available if you took the corresponding drawback. If you have the host body drawback, which does not make you into a symbiote, but makes you act as a symbiote's host, then you can gain a symbiote for free. It will have all the perks you purchased in this document. It will have an infantile mind and will develop its morality and personality from its interactions with you. So this is if you like the idea of having a symbiote companion, but you don't want to be a symbiote yourself. 
As usual with these particular types of jumps, there is an extensive list of drawbacks. I'm hoping that this particular jump dock has cooperated with me and does not have a whole bunch of pages that haven't loaded, but it looks like it did cooperate with me. You absolutely love to see it. So part of the intent of these extensive lists of drawbacks is giving you the ability to purchase a hilarious number of things. So if you wanted perks from Origins other than the one that you selected, or if you wanted all of the general perks and all of your Origins perks, you would need to go through and grab at least a few drawbacks, hopefully not a tremendous number. I do suspect that there's probably enough drawbacks here for everything if you really just made it super hard for yourself, but I haven't actually done the math to figure it out because this one is more cost heavy than the Doctor Doom one was, which only had three origins. Since this one has so many origins, it would cost a ridiculous more number of points. That said, I do hope that you have enjoyed this examination of the jump documents. I have really enjoyed making these types of videos. I think that this is a fantastic out of context supplement, and I am such a big fan of it. I think it's so much fun to have the ability to become a symbiote because I myself as a jumper prefer the weirder, more out there alt forms, and I I also really like the idea that I can both go and help someone if I really want to with my symbiotic powers, as well as just go and absolutely torment the shit out of other people if they are bad people or if they're good people and my jumper is evil. I really like making evil jumpers, so I think it's a lot of fun to have jumpers that have powers like this because this is a jump that is super easy to cheese and to make just absolutely awful for the people in the setting around you. That said, if you really do want the most out of this particular supplement, you're definitely going to need to heap on the drawbacks. So I would probably recommend simply uh, going to a safe setting or having a lot of out of context powers that you can use to make up for all the drawbacks that you're going to have to deal with. That said, there is so much fun fun to be had in this jump document. I strongly recommend it for friends who want quirkier alt forms and who want to do things that other jumps may not allow them to do super easily. There's a lot of different ways to give people powers in this particular jump document, which could be a lot of fun. If you would like to go to mundane worlds, or if you have a jumper who's just really generous about giving out powers, this could be a lot of fun for you. This is also a very fun way to get a lot of cloning abilities. Cloning abilities are some of those powers that are just incredibly overpowered in any context, but especially in something like a jump chain where you have something to the effect of like a time limit on how long you're going to be in a setting. And if you really want to get the most out of it, having stuff like super speed, teleportation, and cloning abilities are ways to go about that really efficiently. That said, I am going to go ahead and end out the video here. I hope you loved this supplement. This is one of my faves, even if it's not quite as near and dear to my heart as Dr. Doom or the Superman substitution one. This is still one that I highly recommend for a wide range of jumpers. I think that it would be really neat to get more eyes on this, and I hope that you, having watched this video, decide to use this in your next chain. Have a great day, everyone!